Hello and welcome to Foucault's Pendulum for Advanced Experiments number 8. In today's video we'll be talking about how to make an accurate plumb bob. So you might be asking why are we making an accurate plumb bob? Should we be making an accurate pendulum? Well yes, we should be making an accurate pendulum but in order to make an accurate pendulum we have to make an accurate plumb bob. So here we have a plumb bob. Here we have a pendulum. The only difference is one swings and one stationary. But in that swing, the order of accuracy has to be magnified again another 10 by 10. So we have to start off with an accurate plumb bob first. Now, if you're watching video 7, you realise I had a problem with my static pendulum number 2, which was an out of plumb plumb bob. And I couldn't figure out why it, why it should wobble why it didn't wobble and if you go through that video you'll, you'll understand what my problem was. And I asked for some help on the internet and uh, I can science that came to my rescue and solved the problem. And in coming to my rescue, rescue I can science that made in a really very good uh, video which I consider now essential watching for anyone who's going to make a Foucault pendulum because his video was on why uh, don't plumb bobs wobble. And during that video he's put together a whole lot of science, vector diagrams and explanations on why they shouldn't wobble. And I, I, I recommend, totally recommend this video for anyone what, making a pendulum or understanding in fact plumb bobs and the theory of plumb bobs. Uh, so where are we up to? Well I'm, I have a question why do plumb bobs wobble? Now unfortunately in practice they do wobble. And uh, why do they wobble? Well the short answer is because they're not accurate. If you've um, been following the series you notice that I've been making some boring you to death with these static pendulums. And the first pendulum I made was this static pendulum number one which is that steel bar. Pendulum, static pendulum number two Two was the out of plumb plumb bob, which was you seen in video seven, and static pendulum number three is a little bit too harder to com comprehend, uh, comprehend. So maybe if I explain this to you in another way, this will come up during our process of uh, understanding the pendulum, the full cost pendulum. So. Here I have a tuning fork. Uh, hanging plumb to the earth, it's a plumb bob. Oscillating at 100, oscillating at 128 hertz. It's still static, but it's vibrating. Now, is that a pendulum, a plumb bob, or what? Okay, so moving on. How do we test our, the accuracy of our plumb bob? So what we need is an accurate plumb bob tester, which will eventually become an accurate pendulum tester. So I have made one, and here's what it looks like. So here's my precision plumb bob tester, made from MDF, four mounting screws for adjustability to get this plane here level, DC motor, actually this is a, a brush DC motor, uh, very expensive motor in fact, I was after zero run out, hopefully you can get away with a cheaper one. Uh, speed control essential. This motor runs on 3 volts so a 1.5 volt battery will run this thing for several days. Down below is the uh, magnetically decoupled bearing which you've seen before. Um, the, this is the roof ceiling mounted one with four mounting screws. Possibly the only advice I can give you if you want to make your own is 
Best place to mount in your in your own private laboratory. <laughs> That's if you've got one, but don't mount in your lounge room. It really gets creates a lot of questions. So here we have the setup from video seven. Nothing's changed. On our left is our static pendulum. Zooming up the top. The only thing I've changed is I've placed a smaller pendulum onto the plumb, this plumb bob tester. Now I'll zoom in on that. And I'll start spinning the plumb bob tester to give you a better idea of this slight wobble that you might see in that bearing at the top. That very small wobble you'll see is due to a mismatch, misalignment of the aglet. The aglets were made just roughly. This wasn't uh, meant to really go into production, but it ended up being a very good demonstration. So I just sort of kept it just as a example. If we come back down to the pendulum now, you'll see that it has a slight wobble in it. Also, mismatching the aglets on the top of the pendulum aren't in alignment either. So, let's let that go for a bit and you'll actually see gradually the pendulum will become more and more unstable. Try and line it up to that, next to that vertical line in the cupboards. As you would have known in I Can Science That's video, he did mention the centrifugal force vector. That's sort of coming in a bit here. Uh, trying to get away with more weight will get rid of that centrifugal vector. So Anyway, I think that's showing you just a slight error. That error in this pendulum caused the pendulum to randomly swing in a clockwise direction, which uh, all my pendulums should swing anti-clockwise. So there's an example of a very small error and the problem it could cause. It's been several minutes since I briefly stopped the video, so I just happened to catch the pendulum becoming very unstable now. It's drawing a, well it should be drawing a true circle if the centrifugal vector was accurate but my suspicion is it's drawing an elliptical circle there. It'll soon become so unstable actually will dislocate itself from the uh, magnetic coupling which it is actually designed to do. Okay, I might just uh, show in a little uh, another example of centrifugal vector and its influence so just this may help you as well I'll go to another example so here we have a solid bar without the error of aglets or weight distribution I'll just get that spinning and you should see a pure centrifugal vector come in So it's spinning now and it's drawing a true circle which is straight from the centrifugal vector. Perfect circle. No errors. Now it'd be nice to be able to use one of these is our pendulum, but of course Foucault didn't use one, so we can't use one. Okay, I better pull that down because they become unstable and that will 
dislocate itself. So here we have the bearing set up for the static pendulum number two and that out of plumb issue we had in video seven. I'll just give you a little bit more focus on that. I'm not using a aglet, so the string twine, which is a builder's twine, is just locked straight into the bearing without an aglet. And uh, as I turn this bearing, it self sanders and wobbles. And my issue was uh, the roof is out of alignment, the bearing's out of alignment. If this bearing was placed in one position, would it wobble back if the earth went around 180 degrees? So obviously from what we learnt from I can science that and the knowledge we have on bearing fiction, the plumb bob will just go around with the earth and the room and you won't see any wobble. I might just spin that for you on the uh, static, on the pendulum or the plumb bob tester and just give you a look what a really ugly plumb bob looks like. Pretty serious wobble there. I'll try and focus in on that string halfway down. Oh, it did do it. Okay, that will eventually jump off that bearing at the top. Those interested in the misalignment of the vertical vector in video 7, I'll just focus in on our uh, mismatch, misalignment. I'll swing that round and align the top vector to the bottom vector. Well, too far. Okay, so we've got alignment. What I'll do is I'll turn the top around 180 degrees. And our plumb bob is still in alignment. As what was predicted by all those who made comments. So you're all correct. Alright, I'll just turn that around at the top to show you the little pointer. If you notice, here's a pointer. I'll go around another 180 degrees again. And no misalignment. Okay, I think that's enough for the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in number nine.